Next, we will move on to the third method called cutting plane method. How many of you have read integer programming in your BTEC level? If you have read integer programming in any of your institute, then you must have read this cutting plane method. Okay. So, this cutting plane method is one type of linearized search methods LSM. We have discussed seven groups of methods under constraint optimizations. Method of multiplier and penalty function method comes under transformation method. Now, we are going to another group of methods called linearized search methods. Since the term linearized, what you do? Here, the given nonlinear programming problem in converted to a linear programming problem by linearizing. Linearizing what? Objective function as well as the constraint, whichever is nonlinear. If any of the objective function or any of the constraint is nonlinear, make it first linear. Once it becomes linear, then you can solve it by linear programming algorithm. Either simplex or dual simplex, whichever is applicable, you can able to solve it to find the new solutions. Then at the new solution again, if you find anything has become nonlinear, again you convert it to linear programming by linearizing that objective function and constant. Like this you continue till optimal solution is obtained. This is the basic philosophy of the linearized search method. What is that? If any time any function is nonlinear, convert it to linear and solve it by linear programming algorithm. That is the basic principle. Whichever is nonlinear, make it linear. Now, how to make linear? We will learn that expression here. How we can make a nonlinear programming expression to linear expressions? Okay. Under this group of methods, there are two algorithms. One is called Frank Wolf method, another is cutting plane method. In your syllabus, only cutting plane method is included, not cutting, not Frank Wolf method. But if you are interested, you can learn also. No problem. Okay. In Frank Wolf method, we linearize objective function and all the constants at each iterations. Whereas, in cutting plane method, we linearize objective function and all are not necessary, only a few governing constants at each iteration are to be linearized, whichever is necessary. Only difference is that here all constants, whether required or no, but here only few constants are to be linearized. Make it linear, Frank Wolf and cutting plane method. Okay. Now, how to make it linear? To do that, use first order term in the Taylor series expansion. In your engineering mathematics, you must have learned what is Taylor series exp expansion. In that, you take the first order term. Now, you are at let us say current point is x 0, which in the algorithm you move from point to point. Let us say you are at x 0. x 0 means you know that coordinates, the value of x 1, value of x 2. If it is a two variable problem, you know that x 1 and x 2 value. So, x 0 you are at the current point. First, find out the value of objective function at the current point f at x 0. Then you add it what? Take the value of the gradient vector of f at the current point x 0. Find out del f, the gradient vector, and then put the value of x equal to x 0 and find out that value del f at x 0. So, it is a number just like f of x 0 will be a number, a value del f x 0 is also a number. Take its transpose means if it is a column transpose will make it a row vector and with that multiply x minus x 0. So, thereby this will give you a function of x because this is x is a variable here. All other are number x 0 is a number, f of x 0 is a number, del f x 0 is a number. So, thereby you will get the right hand side is a function of x. So, thus this f of x can be linearized at the current point x 0 by using this expression. So, if f of x is nonlinear, then at x 0, if you use this expression on the right hand side, this will be linear. So, that f x will be linear. So, this left hand side is a linearized objective function f, whereas this f is nonlinear f. On the right hand side, whatever f you are saying, there is nonlinear f but left hand side this will be a linearized f clear. So, this is the expression you have to use it any doubt no. So, in cutting plane method you start with a some search space not a point just like Stephen's descent method you start from a point, but cutting plane method start with a search space defined by the lower limit and the upper limit for every unknown variable. Let us say two variable problem. So, for x 1 assume some lower limit upper limit similarly for x 2 assume some lower limit and upper limit. Now, in this since the name says it is a cutting plane, you take the help of a plane. So, in that search space 
let us say two variable problem. So, surface will be a plane, it will be a three variable problem, it will be a space like this. So, in a search space you have to now take a plane and you cut it and remove one portion of this using this plane one portion you remove it. So, thereby search space is reduced to a smaller search space. So, how do you uh, eliminate, eliminate or cut? If you remember the principle of region eliminations. So, there what you do? Take a search space then reduce one portion of this and reduce the search space. Here also same. Search space reduces to a smaller one by the help of a plane, if you linear hyperplane from the maximum violated constraint at the current point. Identify which constraint is getting violated to the maximum extent. That means, find out the values of all the constraint wherever the maximum negative value is there for the g function that will be the maximum violated constraint. So, after removing the some portions for the over the remaining search space then you minimize the objective functions. Since already have linearized, so you can use any linear programming algorithm and then you have to minimize. So, you get a new point using the LP algorithm you will find out the minimum point. Then from that point again some portion of search space is further eliminated and continue till optimal point is obtained. This is the way the cutting plane method proceeds step by step. Search space is cut by a plane, some portion is removed and the remaining search space the linearized objective function f is minimized. Since it is a linearized one, so you can take the help of any linear programming algorithm. So, let us see how is the algorithm. So, use any linear programming algorithm to minimize the f of x. Usually cutting plane method solve when objective function is linear and the constraints are non-linear. But still with some modification also even if linear, linear function is non-linear, even if the objective function is non-linear also with some slight modification you can able to solve it using cutting plane method. And f x is minimized using any linear programming algorithm. So, this is a algorithm for cutting plane method. Step 1 initialization. So, assume a initial search space denoted by z z 0. So, this is a set of all points there is x such that semicolon is such that this is a set set of all points for which each independent variable x i you are specifying that this lies between its corresponding lower limit and upper limit. Please correct it this will be u not l this will be u. So, x i is less than x i u upper and greater than x i lower. So, this is for all this unknown variable from i is equal to 1 to n. So, you have to define it what is your initial search space. That means, assume the boundary there is lower boundary and upper boundary for each and every unknown variable x i. Then termination criteria epsilon assume it to be a very very small number small positive number that is tends to 0 plus and this actually is called constraint tolerance. This constraint violation should be as minimum as possible constraint violation should be as low as possible. So, initially what you do you do not consider any of the constraint that is given in the problem you just take the objective functions which is a linear one c 1 x 1 plus c 2 x 2 up to c n x n you minimize that subject to what assuming that only the non negativity that the in LPP the last line is there na, non, non negativity conditions means using this search space. So, already a search space has been assumed z 0. So, assume that this all the points belongs to the search space and do not consider any of the constraints and minimize it. So, this is a long linear program problem use any LP algorithm and minimize it and to start with set the iteration counter k is equal to 1. So, in step 1 you are assuming two things one is search space then the termination criteria epsilon in the second part you are forming a linear programming problem taking only the objective function which is a linear functions and subject to only the initial search space ignoring all other constraints. Even if there is g and h you just ignore them at the initial you have to add n one by one at every iterations. Okay. Next step 2 now find out you have already minimized it in the previous iterations using some LP algorithm. So, you got a solution there let us say that solution is x k at that x k now find out the value of the left hand side of each and every constraint what is given in the problem all the g type of constraint that is j is equal to 1 to j substitute the value of x k 
what is x k? x k is the here here you are minimizing at this step b na under 1 in the b you are solving this linear programming problem. So, you get a solution that solution is x k at that x k find out the value of the left hand side of each and every constant that is g 1, g 2, g 3 up to g n. Out of all the constant whichever gives you the maximum negative number one will give you the maximum negative number. So, that is your maximum constant violations and that you denote it as minus g m maximum of all the negative number that you obtain for all the constant g 1, g 2, g 3 will uh, when you put it some number you will get it out of that whichever is maximum negative that you denote it as minus g m x k. So, thereby you are identifying that which m means which serial number of the constant is getting violated to the maximum. Now, that constant violations g m x k take the absolute value if it is very very small less than epsilon you stop it and print that whatever that x k value we have obtained that is your optimal solution x star. So, if it is not a small number move to next step step 3 here you have to construct a plane cutting plane and cutting plane is denoted by the symbol p p for plane and this plane is what the maximum violated constant that is g m at x k plus del g m the gradient of that particular constant g m at x k then multiplied with x minus x k. It is the same expression that I used for to linearize and then write down greater than or equal to 0. So, this is a new constant right. So, whichever at point is greater than or equal to 0 that you take it and this will be your cutting plane one plane. So, this plane will be now the feasible space h k. Then now in the next year one you have to solve the following LPP and get the solution at x k plus 1. What is that? The same objective function you have to minimize it, but subject to what? Earlier you are using what? x belongs to only z 0, but now what will you do? x belongs to z k minus 1 which was the previous z. Then you take a intersection of h k. Here already your h k you got it one search space. So, this search space and the previous search space. So, it was z 0 because k is equal to 1 now here. So, 1 minus 1 it is 0. So, z 0 intersection h k. So, a reduced one you will take it. Out of that z 0 only which is common to h k only that you have to take it. So, thus this intersection set is your new search space that is z k and that z k you take it and go to step 2 and again you repeat it. So, search space gets reduced get cut at each and every iterations. 2 set you have to take the intersection means it is a smaller set. So, this is the constraint optimization problem because here there is a objective function which we are going to minimize and this is subjected to a number of constraints. So, this is a constraint optimization problem. Now, is this a linear programming problem? Objective function is linear, none of the power of the independent variable is more than 1. So, objective function is linear, but the constraints all the constraints are not linear. The second constraint is linear, third constraint is also linear, fourth constraint is also linear, but the first constraint is not linear because here at least one of the independent variable has the power more than 1. So, here x square and if you expand it this also this will be x square. Please correct it this will be x 1, x 1 minus 5 whole square. So, this is a non-linear programming problem. We cannot solve it using either a graphical solutions or a simplex solution or a dual simplex method right, but we have to solve it. So, we can solve it by using any of this numerical method that we discussed in the last few classes either penalty function method or method of multiplier, but today we will solve the same example using a method called cutting plane method where the philosophy is that we will first convert it to a linear programming problem and then solve it. So, what was the algorithm how to start read step 1 what is that it says. So, x 1 is greater than 0 now what would be the higher limit if you do not know it it will be infinite, but if you are particular about this particular problem means if you are thorough about your current your given problem then if you have an idea that no x 1 cannot exceed some certain value then you can take it there. So, that you can reduce the time why to unnecessarily search a very infinite space you can limit it this one. So, let us say x 1 the higher limit is 6 we know from your 
knowledge about this particular problem. Let us say the higher limit let us assume to be 6 and also x to the higher limit is also let us say it is 6. So, what is the surface then? Graphically if you represent it, it will be 0 to 6, 0 to 6. So, it is a square having sides 6. Now, then these are the two constraints right. Uh, then what this is next algorithm? Yeah, then how to start it read it that. So, surface is 0 to 6, 0 to 6 then next line is what? Read your algorithm that you have read, uh, written. So, objective function is already li linear. So, no need other. then what is that you have understood in the last step? Now, question is will you be taking all the constraint to start with right read it. Will you consider all the constraint at the beginning or you will consider only few constraint? If at all it is few, which which few constraint you have to consider? If you go back, what is it written? What is this? Assume a search space means for every independent variable you are assuming a lower limit and a higher limit. So, x1 we have assumed it is lower limit is 0, higher limit is 6. Similarly, for x2 lower limit is 0, higher limit is 6. Then what? Then you assume some termination criteria. Let us say one decimal place accuracy you want. So, so, epsilon is equal to 0.1. Okay. Then what? Solve the following LPP. This is the LPP that you have to solve it. So, what is written here? So, minimize on x1, it is already there, already linear, that objective functions. Then subject to what? Subject to only that what? No other constraint is to be considered. It is clear. Only what? You have to see that it is belongs to only search space. This z0, whatever we have assumed it, search space, there is x1 0 to 6, x2 0 to 6, only that you have to consider. What does it mean? So, G 1, G 2 just ignore only G 3, G 4 you have to consider only the search space that lower limit and upper boundary, lower limit and upper limit of each of the independent variable that we have defined in this Z 0. Now, solve it then and tell me this is now LPP solve it and LPP yeah. So, look at this slide first. So, initial search space Z 0 is what x 1 from 0 to 6 let us say x 2 0 to 6. So, z 0 is a set of all the points x vector x means what this is a representative point such that x 1 value is this much x 2 value is this much. Now, objective function is already linear here in this particular problem. So, no need to linearize it otherwise you have to linearize it using that expressions. So, now form LPP with only variable bounds as constraints. So, thus LPP looks like what minimize f of x is equal to 170 minus 14 x 1 minus 22 x 2 subject to this two constraints. This is that search space that defines the search space g 1 g 2 you have to ignore it. So, very easily you can solve it because it is a two variable problem if you solve it graphically very quickly you can get it. Tell me the answer. So, first identify the convex set the feasible zone and out of the feasible zone you identify how many corner points are there and at each and every corner point find out the value of objective function wherever it is minimum that you have to consider. Yes. Very S 6, very good, excellent. So, these are the four corner points 0, 0, 6, 0, 0, 6 and 6, 6 at each of this point find out the value of f x. So, at 0, 0 what is the value of f x? 170 because 14 into 0 is 0, 20 into 0 is 0, so f x is 170. Similarly, at 6, 0, so 14 into 6 how much it is? 84, 84, 84, no? 84, then 170 minus 84 whatever it is. So, like this you find it, right? so this is that feasible joke on x axis plot x 1 on y axis plot x 2. So, x 2 the the first constraint is what x 1 is less than or equal to 6. So, x 1 is equal to 6 will be a vertical line having x 1 is equal to 6. So, this point will be 6 0. So, anything less than this one means this side this zone left hand side of this vertical line x 1 is equal to 0. So, this is a feasible zone then another is x 2 is equal to 6 plotted. So, x 2 will plot is it is a horizontal line having the value x 2 the height is equal to 6. So, anything down like this that is corresponds to x 2 less than or equal to 6, but greater than or equal to 0. So, above this 0. So, the common zone will be this thing the shown in the is a scala, sky blue color. So, this sky, sky blue color shaded zone represents the feasible solutions or feasible zone. Is it a convex set? because you take any two points in this zone and then if you connect that two points it will be line and that line contains entirely in this zone. So, this is a convex set. Yeah. Now, in this convex set there are four corner points 0 0, 0 6, 6 6 and 6 0. So, one of its corner point is a solution and that is a optimal solution that is a principle of simplex method as well as the graphical solution. So, find out the value four at four corner points find out the value of 
f of x whichever gives you neg most minimum one that is the optimum solution. All of you have found out? Okay. So, the values you cross check 170 at 0 0, 86 at 6 0, 38 at 0 6 and minus 46 at 6 6. So, out of this 4 value which is minimum? Minus 46. Although x 1 x 2 has to be non negative, but f x may be positive or negative. right? So, the optimal solution occurs at 6 6. Let this point be x 1. What is the significance of writing x to the power 1 and within bracket we keep it? Yes. For you I am not writing x only 1. If you write simply x 1 or x 2 means it represents as be the x square or x 3, but the notation is not like this. Here it says in the after the first iterations within bracket means after the first iterations this is the solutions. Okay. Now, find out at this point at 6 6 what is the value of the constant g 1 and g 2. So, put 6 6 at the g 1. So, x 1 is equal to 6, x 2 is equal to 6. So, it will be 26 the left hand side of g 1 the first constant. So, 26 minus in place of x 1 it will be 6 minus 5 full square minus in place of x 2 write down 6. And if you solve it check it it will be minus 11. Did you get it minus 11? Same thing 6 6 you put it at g 2 constants. So, 20 minus 4 x 1. So, 4 into 6 minus x 2 so minus 6. So, on simplifying you will get minus 10. So, the solution which was optimal that 6 6 considering only the g 3 g 4 as a constant is actually not the optimal solutions for the given problem because it violates the first and second constants. This 6 6 is a optimal solution is it a feasible solution must be otherwise it cannot be optimal. But feasible to what? The const the problem where we have ignored, we have not considered G1 and G2. We have considered only G3 and G4. It is the optimal solution for that particular LPP. But for the given LPP where there are four constants, G1, G2, G3, G4, it is not optimal. Because why it cannot be optimal? Because first of all, it is not feasible. Why it is not feasible? Because at least one of the constant here both the constant G1, G2 are not satisfying. It is not greater than or equal to 0 it is a negative value minus 11 minus 10 clear. So, 6 6 although it is feasible to the uh, simplified LPP where we have not considered G 1 G 2. So, that is cannot be accepted as it is. Okay. Now, let us consider on which one is a maximum constant violation means minus 11 and minus 10 numerically which is the maximum value. So, take their absolute value. So, minus 11 absolute value is 11 minus 10 absolute value is 10. So, 11 and 10 maximum is 11. So, the first constraint is the violated to the maximum extent by this solution 6 6. So, thereby what is the value of m which in the algorithm we have to identify the value of m. So, what is the value of m now then? No, m is not a first or second it is a number m and it is a number and it is an integer number. So, what will be the integer value? So, since first constraint is violated to the maximum extent. So, the value of m will be equal to 1 what is already written here. Okay. So, g 1 is constant to the maximum extent. So, m is equal to 1. Okay. Now, what is the next step? You have to identify a plane now cutting plane right? cutting plane p you have to identify cutting plane p up to this understood there any doubt. We started with a very simple LPP only objective function and the boundary conditions for x 1 and x 2 we have ignored g 1 and g 2 and we have solved it because this is LPP. So, we found out that 6 6 is the optimal solution, but this optimal solution is cannot be accepted as it is for the given problem consisting of four constraints because the constraints g 1 and g 2 are violated. So, it is infeasible. So, it cannot be optimal. Okay. So, then we have identified maximum constraint violation occurs at first constraint that is g 1. So, value of m is equal to 1 up to this clear. So, looks like simple till now right. Let us see I had how it is. Okay. So, then you have to check your stopping criteria termination criteria you check it is it there stopping criteria. So, this maximum constant violations that is 11 numerical value that absolute value since it is not less than epsilon 1 that is 0 0.1. So, we cannot stop it here you have to continue if constant violation is uh, almost negligible then you can stop it there numerically and declare that this is the optimal solutions. So, absolute value of maximum constant violations is 11 which is not less than epsilon epsilon 1 that is 0 0.1. So, do not stop continue. So, go to step 3 in step 3 you have to construct a cutting plane and where you have to construct it must pass through which one the optimal solution that you have obtained till now 
and that solution is now x1 then x star we have equal to x1 the first optimal solution. So, how will you constructed this cutting plane by linearizing which constraint the constraint which was violated to the maximum extent because m value was equal to 1. So, we have to linearize the g 1 constraint the first constraint since m is equal to 1. So, we have to linearize the first constraint. So, that plane has to pass through the point the optimal solution obtained so far because at the edge it gives maximum constant violation. Okay. So, the plane 1 the first cutting plane p 1 is equal to what at the current point that is x 1 find out the value of g 1. So, substitute the value x 1 that is 6 6 put it at g 1 whatever value is there that is g 1 x 1 find out the value of g 1 at x is equal to x 1 then plus for this g 1 find out the gradient del g 1 and then find out the value of del g 1 at x is equal to x 1 take its transpose because it will be a vertical uh, it will be a column vector make it to the horizontal vector and then multiply with x minus x 1 x minus x 1. So, this will be a function of what vector x all others are number this is a number this is a number this is a number only variable will be your vector x vector x means it is a function of x 1 x 2 up to x n here it is a two variable problem. So, x vector x represents x 1 x 2 an expression of x 1 x 2. Okay. So, this is now a function of x. So, then greater than or equal to 0. So, this becomes a new constraint this is a cutting plane any doubt now find out the value this one left hand side this one. find out g 1 and find out the value of x 1 what will the value of x 1 at g 1 already you have found it out there is minus 11. Okay. Now, find out del g 1 already found it out. So, g 1 is this one. So, del g 1 will be equal to what del g 1 del x 1 del g 2 del g 1 del x 2. So, when you take partial derivative this to x 1. So, 26 will be 0 then minus now this 2. So, twice x 1 minus 5 now inside it is only x 1. So, it will be 1 only then minus x 2 square will be 0. Now, second one with respect to x 2 this is a this will be 0 26 will be 0 the x 1 minus 5 square also will be 0 there is no x 2 term and x 2 square will be minus 2 x 2. So, this will be simplified to the first one will be minus 2 x 1 minus 5 and the second element will be minus 2 x 2. Now, put the value at x 1 x 1 means 6 6 vector x 1 means 6 6. So, put value x 1 is equal to 6 x 2 is equal to 6. So, when you put x 1 equal to 6 here 6 minus 5 is 1 1 into minus 2 it will be minus 2 then minus 2 x 2. So, minus 2 into 6 it will be minus 12. So, the value of del g 1 will be equal to minus 2 minus 12 it is a column vector. Next what will you do take the transpose. So, write down in a horizontal one. So, minus 2 minus 12. So, write down now cutting plane p 1 x first cutting plane p 1 x is equal to minus g 1. So, minus 11 now plus del g 1 it will be minus 2 minus 12 either you can put comma here or a blank here it understand right. Then x, x means what? It is a column vector x1, x2. So, x1, x2 minus what? x1, x1 is 6, 6. Now, simplify it. So, first simplify this one inside one. So, this is a column vector x1, x2, this is a column vector 6, 6. So, do the column subtraction. So, respective element will be subtracted. So, x1 minus 6 will be the first element and second element will be x2 minus 6. Now, this you have to multiply with minus 2 minus 12. So, the, this will be a matrix multiplications had it not been made the uh, row vector you cannot multiply the two vectors right. So, do the matrix multiplication. So, minus 2 into x 1 minus 6 plus minus 12 into x 2 minus 6 for the first matrix go horizontally in the second matrix you have to go vertically and multiply the corresponding elements and then add it up. So, this is the way you have to simplify it. So, then minus 11 minus 11. So, on simplifications we will be getting 73 minus 2 x 1 minus 12 x 2 any doubt. Now, this is a linear function cutting plane will be always a it is a plane. So, it will be a linear then put greater than or equal to 0. So, this is the first cutting plane. Now, next what to do? So, we have formed a cutting plane. So, now so far what was the search space h 0 there is 0 6 0 6 a square in this square now you cut this uh, cutting plane and eliminate a portion of it and then reduce the surface. This means you take the intersection of 
z0 that square and this cutting plane. So, which portion will be kept upper half or lower half? This is a square and this is a cutting plane let us say and this is greater than or equal to. So, this has to satisfy this plane also. Okay. So, so, now in kluge now earlier h0 was there which was that this x1 from 0 to 6 x2 0 to 6. Now, we have to add this cutting plane cutting plane p1. So, add this constraints. So, now we will be getting a new LPP minimize the same objective functions subject to the last this uh, last two line was h0. Now, we have to add one more constraint that is described by the first cutting plane. So, now search space will be reduced. Now, let us if you have not aware how to use MATLAB to solve LPP, though let us learn from here. So, first of all, you convert it to standard format that MATLAB can understand. So, for MATLAB, you have to express the objective function in minimization form. If it is maximized, convert it to minimize. Is that clear? So, it is already minimization. So, fx and here you have to keep everything on the objective function it be a function of x1 and x2. Any number is there, then bring it to the left hand side. Is that clear? To express in MATLAB format, the objective function should be c1 x1 plus c2 x2 plus c3 like this in this format. So, minus 70 you take it to the left hand side. So, this will be fx minus 170 is equal to minus 14 x1 minus 22 x2. So, now this fx minus 70 you assume it to be a f1, f1 x something like that, f1 is equal to fx minus 170. Is that clear? It is already minimized. Then subject to here all inequality have to be expressed such that in the left hand side will be only what? x1, x2, x3 all like this and all number you bring it to the right hand side. But in the general format of this one, what do you used to keep it? Everything greater than or equal to 0? No. Everything you keep it on the left and right hand side it was only 0 and it should be greater than or equal to. But in MATLAB, it should be all should be less than or equal to. That is a standard format that MATLAB understand. Or MATLAB program has to be so developed, so designed that objective function should be minimized and everything should be x1, x2, all number you bring it to the left hand side. Here also, all x1, x2, all uh, algebraic expressions should be on the left hand side, less than or equal to a number and x1 less than 6 already there, x2 less than or equal to 6 already there. Okay. So, here this search space, this boundary, this is to be expressed separately, not as a constraint in the MATLAB. So, for every independent variable, you have to define what is the lower bound and the upper bound. So, x1 lower bound is 0 x and upper bound is 6, x2 0 and x3 6. Any doubts? MATLAB format? So, now then you have to write down various matrices. So, the objective function matrix will be f1 and here you have to write down serially for just eliminate x1 and write down only 14. Ignore just forget x2 and write down 22. So, the first element will be minus 14, second element will be minus 22. That means, minus 14 represents the coefficient of x1, minus 22 represents the coefficient of x2. Clear? So, objective functions matrix will be like this. Then, then all the constraints whatever are there, the left hand side you write down in a matrix form that is A and all the inequality constraint the right hand side the matrix should be B. So, B will be right hand side. So, how many constraint is there only one constraint? So, B will be 73 and A will be what? 2 and 12. So, this 2 will be coefficient of x1, 12 will be coefficient of x2. Then lower bound will be what? For x1 0, for x2 0, so 0 0 and upper bound will be 6, 6, 6 and 6. Please note it whenever you uh, specify the lower bound and upper bound between two elements, you must specify semicolon. Yes. What is the meaning of semicolon here? Here you have not, uh, you have uh, put co comma, comma everywhere, but here semicolon. What does it mean? It is a column vector. So, that means 0, 0 means it is actually 0 below 0. This 6 is means it is 6 below 6 like that. So, here you can put either comma or a blank it understands both. Just separate it out two elements. Clear? Then you have to invoke the subroutine in MATLAB that is already available in the MATLAB software that is called lin prog l i n p r o g. So, to do that you can invoke this optimization toolbox. Have you used any time optimization toolbox? How to invoke this menu, this screen? No, then just remember. In the top row there will be a button called apps. Just like mobile you have apps na, various apps. You download from Google. Play store. Ne? So, here already it is there available on the top row, you do not have to download, it is already available in the top row. One of the button you look, it will be apps written A P P S. Write down, you will forget. Click that apps button, 
then below it there will be another horizontal menu that will pop up. When you click the apps button, a another horizontal row of menu will be shown. In that choose one button will be called optimization. First apps, then optimizations, then this screen will come out. Right. Yeah. So, the first one could you read it solver take your cursor and put it this arrow when you click at this arrow downward a menu will come up drop down menu we call it na in that drop down menu many subroutines name will be written in that choose lean proc hyphen linear programming this is name of that function lean proc l i n p r o g and to describe it it is written linear programming so click that select that any difficulty? Then come to next one is algorithm. So, there will be various algorithm available here. You choose simplex. Next come problem. Here it is written f. Could you read it f? f means objective function. So, the matrix that we have already defined in the previous this one, you enter there. So, what was the f matrix you have written now? Minus 14, minus 22. Whenever you fit this matrix, always you have to start with the square bracket here. Square bracket, you have to enter it, eh? square bracket then minus 14, then give a blank or a comma, comma also you understand, then write down 22, minus 22, then bracket close. Means you are entering the data to the MATLAB, various inputs. So, first input is you are, you are telling to the MATLAB that your objective function is minus 14, minus 22, means the coefficient of x1 is minus 14, coefficient of x2 is minus 22. Next, next block this from here to here, it is for constraints. So, there are two types of constraints we have, uh, we have uh, learned, what is that? One is G type, another is H type. So, first is the linear constraints, inequalities, that is your G type of this one. And the second line will be linear inequality, that is your H type of constraints. In this particular problem, there is no equality constraints, was there? No, that is why it is blank. So, that A E Q for the left hand side and B E Q for the right hand side. B E Q stands for B for equality constraint. A for equality constraint. So, this is blank. So, we have only one inequality. So, the left hand side is what? That matrix is 2 and 12. A matrix, the left hand side of all the G types of inequality. So, that matrix is 2 and 12. In the same format, you write down bracket open 2, blank 12, bracket close. And the right hand side is bracket open 73, bracket close. Then comes bounds. Bounds means that last line where for each and every independent variable you have to specify lower and upper boundary. So, here bracket open 0, semicolon you have to write down here. Then if you do not put semicolon then it will be mistake. Then 0 bracket close. That means lower bound of x1 is 0, lower bound of x2 is 0. Then upper bound 6, 6. Then you can specify any starting point if you want or you can let it the algorithm choose each point. So, here you have allowed the start point that algorithm let it choose arbitrarily. Then click start, it runs and gives you the result. Then it will run for, for this one, it will, it will give you, so, right, right, sir. yeah. So, here in the next, this is the window where you can able to see the result. So, optimization is running, objective function value is minus 195.8333, minus 195.8333. So, this is actually what? The value of f1, that is equal to fx minus 170. So, if fx minus 170 is minus 195.833, then you can find out what is the value of fx, find it out. And this you got it where that final point index, index is 1 and 2 because there are two variable. So, the corresponding value is 6 and 5.083. It means the value of x1 is 6, value of x2 is 5.083 and corresponding value of objective function is minus 195.833. Any doubt? So, now if you have any LPP, you can use MATLAB and you can solve it very easily. But thing is that convert it to the standard format. So, optimal solutions occurs at 6.000 and 5.083 with f of 1 value is minus 195.833, this is equal to f x minus 170, because you have already assumed there f x minus 170 is this f 1 that we have already that we have optimized using MATLAB. So, from here f at x 2, because now x 2 is 6 comma 5.083, x 1 was what 6 6. Now, the new optimal solution you got it that is 6 comma 5.083. So, objective function value will be 
if you solve it this once that is minus 195.833 is equal to f of x 2 minus 170. So, from here if you simplify it f of x 2 will be equal to minus 25.833 and this occurs at this x 2 that is 6 comma 5.083. Next what? At this, this is optimal solution for, for which LPP? The f x subject to one constraint that cutting plane and that z 0. But this may not be optimal for the our given problem because g 1, g 2 whatever you have actually what is that you have to consider this may not be problem. Okay. Now, at this problem find out the value of g 1, g 2 find it out put this value x 1, 6, x 2 will 5.083 both at g 1 and g 2 and tell me the value both are negative. So, both are getting violated then what is the value of m then? So, g 1 value will be minus 0 0.837 and g 2 value will be minus 9.083. See, at a given point, you have to find out the value of g 1 and g 2. So, this you have to find out repetitively each and every time. So, this also you can find out if you can write a small MATLAB program, you can run this MATLAB program, it will give you the value of g 1 g 2. Because last time also you have found out g 1 g 2 at 6 6, is not it? Now, also you are finding out g 1 g 2 at 6 comma 5.083. So, if you simply change the values of x 1 x 2, you can find out the value of g 1 g 2 using this program. Who can write down this program function name? Tell me write down the, uh, this MATLAB program and show me that returns this g 1 and g 2 value. All of you write down the MATLAB program which will give you the value g 1 and g 2 when you enter the value x vector x vector x means a set of two values one for x 1 one for x 2 write down that function. So, function always the function file start with a word function y is equal to the file name c 143 within bracket simply write down x right and this file is to be stored in a file name c 143.m. So, this y that you are returning is a matrix form which first element y 1 you can write down 26 minus. Now, since this is x this is a matrix and first element you can recall it as x within bracket 1 that means, it takes the first element of matrix x. So, minus 5 then dot square minus second element of this x matrix x 2 dot to the power 2. Then y 2 this towards the value g 2. So, 20 minus 4 into first element see here dot is not necessary because even if you put dot no problem because this is a number right. But if you are multiplying two variables two matrix x then you must put dot there otherwise it will treat it as a matrix multiplications then minus x 2. Now, this first element second element you store it in a matrix form y 1 comma y 2 stored in a matrix called y and this y you are returning here this end you may write you may not write. Then how to run it in MATLAB in command prompt you put give value x is equal to this is a matrix x is equal to 6 comma 5.083 and then if you run y is equal to c 143 x then it will display y is equal to this and this. So, this is the value of g 1 this is the value of g 2. Now, both of you also correct eh? instead of this x you can write down x 1 x 2 no problem, but in MATLAB simply writing x you can able to do it. Let us say there are 100 elements are there. So, in your format x 1, x 2, x 3 up to 100 you have to specify which is cumbersome. 